So let's think about what the purpose of life is. And I said yesterday that, at least for me, the way I internalize the purpose of life is that it's to help others and to be happy. And you need both. And fortunately for me, those are interlinked in many ways. And as we showed on, the, on yesterday morning in the intro, we like this quote, only a life to live for others is a life worthwhile. And it's not to say that um, if you're just living internally for yourself, it's not worthwhile. It's just often that you get that joy, you get that dopamine, you get that oxytocin when you have close relationships where you're giving as part of your life. And so the question is, the question to really reflect on today is how will you use your one life? So one day um, you will be gone and many of you have experienced loss in your life and of other people. Friends have passed away, parents, grandparents have passed away. And so we know it's, we know it's real and maybe there will be some, some technological future where death can be prolonged or consciousness can be extended. We don't know, but at least in the reality we live in today, every human that's ever lived that we know of has, has eventually passed away. And so the question is, is assuming death, what are we going to do with this life? And how can we live a joyful life? And how can we, at the end of our life, have people come around us and have a life celebration? And how can we, you know, what are, what are those people going to be saying about us? Not only as we live our life, but as we go on. And what legacy are we going to leave behind that makes a difference in other people's lives continually, even after we're gone? And so what, will you bring joy to the world? This is a great question. I said this almost looks, sort of looks like Smiley's older brother. Um, but um, did everyone see that, that viral video from a couple years ago with the guy who did the free hugs campaign? Wasn't that cool? He just, oh, I think it was Australian or something. I don't know. But he just stood in a square and just created an interesting movement that virally spread around the world. So will you be sort of closed off and just in your mind all the time, or will you be out there giving hugs, giving, giving massages? I lo love that idea, Rebecca. <laughs> Being connected with people. Um, or are you going to live a stressful and anxious life where you're just worried, you're worried, you're worried, and it's coming, the effects on that show up in your relationships, in your own life, in your own health. If I keep going this way for two, year, two more years, I'm going to have a heart attack. And at 27, I actually like really physically felt that. And I had gone from 135 pounds as a cross-country runner in high school to 208 pounds um, by the time, two years later, as a sophomore in college. And so I gained about 70 pounds in two years. And so it's something that, um, as you, if you go through this as, as a young person, you lose a parent, um, a few things happen. As, as you're taking care of, not only do you reflect on your own life, but as you're taking care of your parents rather than your parents taking care of you, you become the parent, and it sort of puts you through sort of that, um, what's the right metaphor? You, your, your iron gets forged in a hot fire, and you become stronger, and you get to learn what you're all about. You become so laser focused when you have a clear mission that if you're working on your clear mission, you're working on your clear purpose, you will move mountains, and you will get anything done. And so what we want is for, as we reach the, wherever our goals are in the future, to, for our well-being to go right along with it and for us to have internal purposes and internal missions that we're, we're so crystal clear about that we will make it happen and we will, bring to, we will inspire a group of people around us that will help us make it happen because we cannot do our missions ourselves. They're too big. Your mission is too big for yourself. Your mission is only possible with community and capable people who are inspired by you. And people will not be inspired by you if you're out of integrity and unclear on what your vision is. If you're in integrity and clear on your vision and clear on your mission and you can succinctly articulate it in 20 seconds and have it come from a place of heart, then you can be impactful and then you can do anything. And so part of this is a way of being. Part of this is I will be joyful. I will be connected. And part of this is I will have clarity on why I'm here. And it's okay not to know, but it's not okay not to ask and not to not to pursue that answer. And so will you live in amazement and wonder at this world that is, we're somehow here, we somehow have this opportunity, or just be unaware of the beauty that surrounds us? And as I was sitting there meditating during the mindfulness session, suddenly during the three minutes, I think I heard a train uh, and three or four trucks. It's like, if you think about that, in three minutes, I heard a train and four trucks. How many, how many times did that happen yesterday I was completely unaware of? 
How many other things happen in our life that we're so completely unaware of because our mind is not in the moment, not in the present? Because the only thing you can affect is the now. And once you accept where you are in the now, then you can change the future. And so we are here today standing on the shoulders of our grandparents and our parents with this opportunity to create this world finally, if you think about it, in the span of human history for the first time we'll of the nexus of a sustainable planet and a prosperous planet. So I want to talk about two different types of worlds, the ordinary world and the extraordinary world. And the everyday always world. And by, me, by that I just mean the world that most people operate within their minds is a world that is very normal and average and it's often filled with anxiety and stress and tension and lack of good communication and fear and anxiety and some of that is our amygdala that hasn't quite evolved as fast as our culture has evolved. And it's a world of fear, anxiety, insecurity, frustration, scarcity, disappointment, upset, Danger, desperation, limitation, anger, victimization, cynicism, mistrust, manipulation, defensiveness, always having to have a reason and always being judgmental on ourselves and always having to have logic, inaction, and greed and resignation. This is, this is the world that many of us have lived in and many people live in every day. And it's not the world that we need to live in. And as Landmark talks about, we talked a little bit about Landmark Forum yesterday, which I'd encourage anyone to do that hasn't, what they talk about is moving into the extraordinary world, which is a world that we like to live in here at Hive, where there is connection and community and hope. And not only, it's not idealistic hope, it's actually practical hope, because it's not just that. It's not just what should the world look like, it's how do we actually make that happen, which is what tomorrow is about. And it's a world of fun, joy, happiness, kindness, empathy, caring. You can see everything as it comes onto the screen. And this is the world we want to live in within Hive, within this culture. This is the world we want you to experience every single day and to have the tools to create, importantly, for the people around you so that working at your organization, working for your division, is not boring and stressful and worrisome. And so that when you come around people, they don't freak out, but they welcome you and they're happy to see you. And so how do we move from this world of the ordinary that we're almost actually literally genetically programmed still to live within to this world of the extraordinary where our prefrontal cortex, where our empathy, where our compassion comes into play. And so the reality is that is anything is possible for our lives that we choose. We can go, we can do, we can create. And we're very fortunate, many of us in this room, to have this opportunity and that happiness in so many cases is a choice, and that joy is in fact a choice.